This week, influential activist, feminist leader, Dorothy Pittman Hughes was given some overdue recognition with the dedication of a plaque in her honor in her hometown of Lumpkin, Georgia. Hughes was a founding force in emerging social movements that are now well-established, including women's rights. In fact, 50 years ago, when this photo was taken, she was about to embark on a speaking tour with feminist icon Gloria Steinem, who's remained a lifelong fan, friend, and fellow activist. Pittman Hughes has now retired from public life, but we sat down with those closest to her, including Steinem, to honor her life's work. This year, the press has finally discovered a movement. When Gloria Steinem brought her kaleidoscope life to the big screen, Hello. she made certain her partner in the struggle for women's rights, my name is Dorothy Pittman Hughes, portrayed by Janelle Monet, was prominently featured. Is that too many women are being forced to leave their children home alone while they work to feed their families. Feminist, child welfare advocate, pioneering businesswoman. I knew that Dorothy was absolutely fearless. It was always clear that if she was running the revolution, you wanted to go to it. <laughs> Dorothy Pittman Hughes was already a player when Steinem profiled her in New York Magazine in 1969. She had created the first child care center, non-sexist, multiracial child care center in New York City. And also she was a kind of genius street organizer of all the merchants along 125th Street. And beyond. Founder of the city's first battered women's shelter and New York's Agency for Child Development, Pittman Hughes also established the Women's Action Alliance with Steinem. We believe that the alliance and an emphasis on local action... A national information now. center specializing in children's education. She was a bit of a spitfire, wasn't she? Absolutely. No, completely. She was always organizing demonstrations to protest the conditions in welfare hotels, for instance. I mean, just massive, massive demonstrations. Women earn approximately half of what men do. For the Steinem, part. too, had made a name for herself. <laughs> arguing that racial and economic inclusivity was vital to the gender equality movement. If you recognize discrimination in one form, you're more likely to recognize it in another. But black women have always been in the leadership of the women's movement. Why were you so open to hearing all voices and recognizing all voices in this movement? Most of the women are in the world are not white. A tiny proportion of us are white. So it just seemed natural to look at women as a group. And when I was with a group of women that didn't look like the country, to say why. Now fast friends, they hit the speaking circuit, touring the country with two goals, win over minds to gender equity and tighten up Steinem's speaking skills. She taught me that I didn't die if I got up in front of an audience. This was crucial. She taught me that actually the whole point was to speak the way we do in everyday life, the way we do to each other, the way we do in, in the street, not in an artificial way. Those two years on the road took their toll on Pittman Hughes' three daughters. But her eldest, Delethea Ridley Malston, says the cause was worth it. I think by the age 14, I realized that she was helping a lot of people, even though she wasn't always there with us. She was helping a lot of other people. And it's kind of what we grew up in my family. Born in Lumpkin, Georgia, she fled the South five years after her father was nearly beaten to death by the KKK. I was about six years old when she took me back home to Georgia. Still, she returned, hoping once again to change minds. And they drove to Alabama and other places throughout the South, looking to kind of meet the KKK. I mean, they were out to meet and interview and talk to these people and to change what they could. When I was eight, my mom moved my brother and I to my aunt's house. Oscar-nominated actress Gabare Sidibe says her aunt Dorothy was her greatest example of womanhood. My aunt didn't have a husband, and she was the only person I knew that had a house, that had an upstairs. And I remember realizing that 
she had all of this. She had this entire house that she owned. I didn't realize that I could be a, an actualized person without a man. And she is the first person to show me that. For Sidibe and legions of others, a single photo personifies all of that. Now in the National Portrait Gallery Smithsonian Collection. And Dorothy never let me forget that I didn't know how to make a fist that I had my thumb out instead of in. We did a version of the same photograph as old ladies. <laughs> and she was still telling me how to make a fist. Her power and presence at long last being recognized <laughs> with a plaque dedication this week in her hometown of Lumpkin, Georgia. Now living in Florida with her daughter, she met over the last year with Steinem to celebrate her 82nd yeah, birthday over Zoom. You no, know, we're not afraid to move ourselves in the direction of, of caring about people. So I would think that anything you want to do, call me. We'll get it done. <laughs> Forever. Pittman Hughes has taken a back seat these days, focusing on family. But those closest to her have continued the legacy and the lessons she taught so many. If we understand leadership as it truly exists, which is truth-telling in the moment, whether it's at a lunch counter or at a street meeting or in a lecture or wherever it is, just, first of all, listening to everyone. You know, being a leader doesn't mean talking endlessly. On the contrary, it means listening and thus making people know that they are worth listening to. You know, their friendship, their partnership produced so much when they would walk into the room. They really had this incredible presence, welcomed by many people, sometimes not so much. One of the funniest stories Steinem told me was they were talking and, you know, often people would attack them um, and would say, you know, are you two lesbians? And she said, are you the alternative? <laughs> and everyone fell out. It just dispersed, you know, all of that negativity because it just drowned out what folks who were against them were out there trying to do and labeling them as something. Didn't matter what they were. They were trying to include. They wanted right. inclusion of all these women. Nice piece. The movie's called The Glorias. The, uh, yes, it's, thank you, Jeff. Sure.